Hi, my name is Carrie Mubarak and I am at wooingnature.life. Welcome to the Full Moon View for June 17, 2019. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's happening astrologically around the time of the full moon. I think it's always helpful um, as people are doing their full moon rituals or full moon activities. Some people get together and have gatherings around that time. And then of course with this full moon coming in on the 17th right behind it, we have the solstice. Um, the summer solstice so I know everyone is um, the energy is very high right now and I know people will be connecting around these these um, these uh, moon tides and around the sun tides and what's happening uh, with our cosmic universe and so just so you can get connected so you'll know what's happening and what energies the moon is bringing in uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, and then I'm going to jump into the oracle and let the oracle kind of finish us up, okay? All right, so the full moon this time around is in Sagittarius. It's in the 25th degree of Sagittarius, and um, basically what's happening and what happens with any full moon is that the moon and the sun are sitting in opposition to each other. So they're sitting directly across from each other. If you know something about astrology, you'll know that an opposition is considered to be a more difficult um, aspect or it may cause some friction, but that isn't always the case. You really have to look at the two energies of, of whatever planets are facing each other or, in other words, opposing each other. And then after you, can, you get a sense of the energy of both of them, then you can um, also understand a little better about how they're working together or not working together and, and it all depends. Um, the other reason why I say that is when we talk about polarities in a linear construct, then yes, those would be opposing. But in a circular construct, things that sit opposite, um, and I guess I'm gonna try to demonstrate with this piece of paper. Um, if you have things that are sitting on two ends or ten, two poles, they would be considered in opposition. But if you think about it in a circular construct, when it become, when a, there is a circular pattern, then these two oppositions actually come together and they form a point um, on the circle that is the same, that is one and the same. So oppositions aren't always poles and, and opposites. Sometimes um, there's a blending or there may even be a mirroring. And I'm gonna say in this particular case, there's definitely some mirroring going on. So the moon in Sagittarius is, um, uh, the focus is about peeling back some layers, not, um, not focusing so much on the self as you are looking at the self in relationship to everything else around you, stripping away the ego, stripping away some of the insecurities that you have, all of that stuff just kind of piles on, you know, when we think of ourselves um, as children, we really come into the world as who we are, you know, and, and it's not until we start interacting with our parents and our siblings and other people in the world and going to school and eventually you grow up and you have a job and you're working with coworkers and you're having relationships that these experiences sort of they, they add to our life, but they can also add weight too, uh, depending on what they are, especially if they're traumatic or if they're um, negative in, in nature. And even sometimes when things are overly positive, it can have the same effect. Again, we're talking about, you know, what happens in poles and, and how those two things meet um, or how those two opposites can meet. So um, the moon's energy is, is really about taking off all that stuff. It's like getting away from um, um, sort of the image, the masked image of who we are and getting to the real meat. It's like time to really get naked and unafraid right now in a really big way. And so the moon is asking us to do that. There's some other planets that are also asking that for, of us now. Um, one of them is Pluto. Um, Pluto is also encouraging an overall change among us. And, and Pluto is, is, is a, um, it's a slow moving planet and it will be making those changes over a long period of time, over a period of years. It has been over years and it still is. So you can kind of expect to kind of be in that mode right now. Everyone can expect to be in that mode right now, no matter what your sign 
um, is. Uh, Pluto is definitely having an effect on all of us. And so Pluto wants us to get to the truth. The moon right now also wants us to get to the truth. And it's sitting opposite um, Gemini. And what Gemini is saying is, you know, take, take, a uh, take some of the emphasis off of yourself your own um, ego driven um, efforts and start to see yourself in the real bigger picture of life so in this case I'm gonna say even though we have this opposition that happens when there's a full moon that this moon and this Sun are really mirroring each other in in a really um, to me in a very clear way so again the focus is on peeling back the layers it's on getting rid of the non-essentials non-essential services and non-essential thoughts that are going on in your head things that you have added to your um to your um experience that aren't needed anymore maybe you've learned what you've already gotten from it but you definitely don't want to hold on to any anger anything that's causing you anger or resentment um, frustration or any anything that causes a negative response you really want to pay attention to that but not pay attention to it where you're just like overly focusing and over over indulging that emotion really what you want to do is like look at it pay attention to it analyze it with your mind and then release it because you don't want to have all this stuff I keep feeling like um, we've got this caked on you know stuff I'm, I'm seeing right now like people with um, it's almost like if you were to take clay or mud and cover your whole body if anybody's ever want, done one of those clay masks and you put the mask on and then after it dries up it's just cracked and you know in all these different places well that's what's going on with us energetically it's like all that stuff that's been caked on and baked on that is dried up and is cracking it's time to start chipping away at that and getting back to our essence and getting back to our core very important um, so we're putting aside our selfish concerns we are looking at the essential aspects of the self and that in essence is going to change your perception now what happens when you change your perception is just like what everybody else says when you change your mind everything around you changes right so you're going to change your mind this is a part of changing your perspective really and truly you're not really changing it you're just going back to to when things were simpler you're going back to who you were and who you are at your core so this isn't a foreign thing it's not like you know you're gonna get any major surprises there may be some revelations but no surprises because really you're just touching getting back in touch um, with that part of yourself that isn't clouded with a whole lot of extra stuff so what is extra stuff um, and I want to look at this from like all the areas so extra stuff physical let's let's look at the physical self now so your physical self extra stuff extra weight okay uh, extra pressures that uh, are applied to you maybe mentally that your body is carrying okay that's extraness you want to get rid of that um, if you don't need to carry extra weight and you know whether or not you're carrying too much weight because your body is going to tell you your knees are hurting or your ankles are hurting or, or there's something else you will know this you will feel it you'll feel sluggish you're feeling out of breath that's how you know so we can look at it and that's just one example um, the other example of uh, carrying physical weight is when you are over focused on the material okay you're um you're obsessed with money or you're obsessed with not having money um or you're uh, overly focused on your physical self like oh am i pretty enough am i cute enough is my hair this and that and all of that stuff is just it's the physical it's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself you want to look cute look cute i like looking cute too but you have to put everything in perspective and you have to make sure that you're balanced in that perspective that oh yeah it's fine to you know dress up and look nice and, and you know do those kinds of things but when that's your sole focus and when you feel like you can't walk out of the house if your makeup isn't perfect or if your hair isn't perfect or if everything isn't just so then maybe you need to kind of peel off the layers of that why is that and where does that come from is that a message that you received as a child or is it just a perception that you got off TV it could be it could very well be 
So again, doing this is kind of changing your perspective. It's changing your mind. And as your perspective changes, your mind changes, your um, your uh, language changes, and then your experience changes too. Um, I did say I was going to talk to you also about the um, some of the other things that we can get layered up with. Emotional layers, emotional baggage. Um, guilt and jealousy and envy and um, anger and stuff like that that can really bog you down. Forgiveness is the key. So you want to get to a place of forgiveness. And the main thing about forgiveness is, is, um, is again, it's, it's a journey inward. It's about seeing yourself in the situation as you are, not as you think you are, not as how you think you're supposed to be, not your job, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not whatever role you're playing at the time. It's not about that. It's about really getting to the core of who you are. And when you do, you can see things a little more clearly. So I'll just say on that note that um, meditation would be a really good practice right now um, for many of us, uh, especially if you are um, experiencing anxiety or if you are um, struggling not getting enough sleep, if you you know undergoing a lot of stress. Um, I recommend that the meditation is, is really important and the meditation is a part of getting in touch with yourself. You have to have to do that. So we're going to get rid of some of those non-essentials. We are going to deal with the illusions that we have of ourselves. We're going to deal with our delusions of grandeur because, you know, some people think that they're a lot <laughs> and they are, <laughs> but it's not necessary right now. Really right now it is about getting getting clear about who you are all right so that's that's what's happening there um so with um gemini gemini is saying hey uh everything is not about you right now let's look beyond just you and then at the same time the moon is saying to take off the layers take off the layers take off the layers and the combination of the two i think is um, really going to uh, offer some magnanimous growth for all of us for all of us um, and um, just like i'm saying with the opposition it does seem like you're kind of doing two things well i'm not focusing on myself but i am focusing on myself um it's 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 you have to strike a balance um, some of us are overindulging in the self, and so you have to pull that back. But what you re what you begin to realize is that some of that overindulgence in ego gratification really comes from some sense that you lack that, um, or you have lacked that somewhere else. So you're overcompensating is really what's happening. So it is about balancing out and um, we can always help you with that. So if you want to get personal on that, if there's something you know specifically that's resonating with you and you want to know, um, well, how is this astrology affecting me personally? You can reach out to me at the email in the description and I can, uh, and we can take care of that for you. All right. So I'm going to go right on in now to the oracle and my apologies for this not being fresh actually i did this video um earlier and it didn't take or something happened and and i didn't get it and so anyway i had already selected these cards and so i and they were very very um clear and right on so i didn't want to rethrow i i really want to work with what's here so, um, I am looking at the sun card um, in the middle. In the middle, there's the sun, and this is certainly uh, indicative of the time period with Sagittarius, um, with the Sagittarius moon. It's bringing up the sun, but the sun and the fire and all of that kind of really reminds me of Sagittarian energy. So, the sun is key and is a key focus right now again what i said about the sun is the saying to pull back to not focus so much on anything that is just solely ego driven that you're starting to kind of come to a place of maturity where you see yourself in context with others around you and so that sun energy is um is is very high right now also it's it's about to be summer 
it's definitely it's about to be summer and it's sunny it's beach weather get outside get some vitamin d for sure for certain in the south which represents the place of childhood a place of learning we have the five of earth and so what i'm feeling right there is that there's change five is the number of change we talked about change and changing our mind changing our perspective changing how we view ourselves and kind of getting some of that old stuff off and then earth is always about grounding so um in your uh at your base at your core it's about making this change and also being grounded while you're making the change and getting in touch with the moon is really going to help you do that it's going to help you get right into the flow in the west position um, which is the looks within place we have the page of fire so we have fire again we have the fire of the sun which is at the core of this reading and then we have fire again as a message and here we have a, a little child um, so that's really perfect um, when we look at the west the West is where we go back in time. We go back in our own history. We look at the lessons that we've learned. But here, by this child being here, this is just telling me again, it's time to go back to our place of childhood. It's time to go back to a more, to the more innocent time. It's okay um, if you're all grown up and, and super mature. It never hurts to find that. And how do you find it? Do something childish, you know, don't, I'm not encouraging people to be childish and be grown-ups, but it's okay for grown-ups to, to do something. Do something you did when you were a kid that you haven't done in a really long time, you know? Go swing on the monkey bars. Go get on the swing. Go on a merry-go-round. You know, ride a hobby horse. Do something to, to reconnect yourself with your inner child um, because that's where your core is. That's before you had all the stuff. Okay, so you want to go back to when you didn't have so much stuff. You can do this too through meditation, creative visualization. Um, you can also do it through a regression. So if you um, want to get in touch with a regressionist, that's, that would be good too. Um, but the main thing is that when you are in meditation, before you go into the meditation, you make sure that your intentions are clear. The intention is to take yourself back to a, a more innocent time, to take yourself back to a good place, not negative. We're going back to um, the good places that we had when we were uh, children because what that does is it helps you to see parts of yourself that you're not bringing to the fore at this time. Um, so you you definitely want to do some meditation around your childhood and um, if you feel like that's going to be traumatic for you then I recommend you do that with your therapist all right in the north in the north position we have um, mess the messenger of earth um, I'm definitely seeing some chakra cleansing here I'm seeing all these chakra points um, really the heart I'm seeing the heart the throat the brow and the crown chakra um, and then I'm seeing, of course, this in the lower chakras. So ground yourself. You need to be grounded head to toe from your crown all the way down to your, your feet. Okay? So it's important to get that grounding. So I'm going to say that if you are... Um, if you need to get your aura cleanse, you need to do some work around your chakras. Reiki is a good re good way to do that um, and other kinds of light work if you're into that. Um, but I'm definitely seeing in this, this channel that goes from head to toe a grounding. We have earth in both of those places. So grounding is needed and grounding is always needed when there's a change. You know, you don't want to just... You'd be changing and, and be all over the place you know what i'm saying so grounding is always needed when there's a lot of change and now is a time for a lot of change um and then of course the number five is about change too so in looking at grounding yourself physically um and like i said i'm looking at the chakras now this one to me i'm feeling is from the, the actually the heart chakra up and then this one i'm feeling like uh from the solar plexus down um so the changes that are coming um, for which you need the grounding uh, if you're talking about your first second and third chakra you want to be um, you want to be eating well first of all you want to take care of your body um, stretching and exercising and all of that releasing tension releasing energy sweating also is really good for um, grounding um, 
And then also you can do some lower chakra work, lower chakra meditations if you feel like you need that. We can talk to you about that personally if you need that um, as well. And, um, and again, I'm seeing meditation here. A lot of meditation or some light work around those upper, those upper channels. Um, you just want to be aligned. You want everything to be in a really good alignment and, and really balanced because then the changes don't have such a drastic effect on you. Um, yeah, the changes are going to happen anyway. But if you're centered and you're grounded, then it will have less of an overall effect. All right, in the east, which is what we have to look forward to, we have some fire and I have some light. So there's some light energy and fire energy, um, which means that that's, that's, that's new. It's igniting. Um, it has the energy of igniting and lighting and warming and um, clearing the way, so to speak, uh, for whatever is coming next. And there is a lot of energy coming. There is a lot of energy coming. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, um, that is that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to share with you from here. Mm, nope, I don't think so. All right, so went to tarot, um, for tarot to give some clarity. Uh, I remember how these went. We got the queen of pentacles. Well, I'll just go straight through them and then it'll probably come back to me. All right, so King of Wands in reverse. Here, what I see is that there are people looking for you, um, but you're, uh, uh, the, the energy right now is like uh, uh, the guard is up, okay? So there are people that you probably don't know that you're not seeing. They're watching you. Look at that great big eye back there. They're watching you. They're paying attention to you, but they may not know if they can approach you. And that was in this same position where we had the page of... Um, the page of fire and that childhood again when children you have children they're very open they're not guarded they're not guarding you know they're not guarding anything they're really open um, and so this is what's needed right now for you to be open but if you've got all of that stuff on you you know then you're not gonna be open you gotta you have your guards up you have your shield and your buckler and you got the sword and and you know what I'm saying and you're ready to take somebody out that's not very inviting so what you want to do is be a little more open connect to that inner child and go to that inner child space where um where there was some innocence and, and where there was trust where you trusted the universe a little more uh, than maybe you are now all right i've got queen of pentacles look at all that green of pentacles i had that in the south place um, again, when we're talking about the five of earth and being grounded, what I'm seeing here is um, issues or worries about money, being concerned about your stuff. So this goes right along with what we're talking about, about being grounded in the earth. We talked about physically making sure that your body is um, taken care of, that you're eating good food and that kind of thing. But I'm getting here like, don't be worrying about the money. So if you're overly focused on that, stop focusing on that there. Again, that's that's what this inner child is going to do. The inner child doesn't worry about money. They just wake up and start the day, you know. So um, let that also be a, a bit of a message for you. Um, so if there is some grounding that needs to be done, I know it's hard if you don't have a lot. It's kind of hard to think about, like, not thinking about it. But um, you've got to exercise some faith right now and not focus so much. That's an over-focusing there. And that's not going to ground you. It really isn't. So we got five of cups in reverse. Um, so five, again, is a number of change. And then I also got the five of pentacles upright, too. So two fives here. Actually, it's three because this is a five, too. So we have five of earth. We have five of earth again, and we have five of cups, which is um, of water. So there's some, ch there's clearly changes happening here. This change in the five of cups reverse is, is it's, it's things coming to you. It's things coming to you. So this is change that's happening, but the change is going to make it so that you have what you need. So there again, no need to worry about the money no need to worry worry about that no need to be worrying about any kind of physical resources at all because those things are coming with the change and that's in um 
the Ace of Fire position. And then we have the Five of Pentacles here. And again, this, what I'm seeing is, well, it is in Pentacles, so there's still some, some, um, some basic primal needs that um, people need taken care of right now. But you've got to kind of get in the flow. You've got to get in the cycle. And that's what connecting to your moon is all about. You got to get connected to your to the cycles of life so that you're in the ebb and flow and you're not fighting the flow. You can't fight the water. You cannot fight the water. And this is we're getting ready to go into a water season in Cancer very shortly. All right. So we have six of cups reversed here. What I'm getting is rest. Take it easy. Take a load off. Let some other people do some of the things that you need to do, that need to get done. I have this in the same. Um, position where I was talking about getting with these upper chakras. The upper chakras need your attention right now and you, they're not going to get your attention if you're trying to do everything yourself. You can't do everything yourself. You're going to have to delegate to other people so that you will then have the time to rest, to sleep, and to do some meditation that you need to do so that you can unblock this energy and so that you can get back to this place right here. I think that's that. I think that pretty much clears it up. So this is this is your full full moon focus right now. Um, just a short recap. We are getting rid of the old stuff, getting rid of the unnecessaries, taking off some of those extra layers, getting to the core of who we are, going all the way back to who we were in the very beginning. Um, and from there, you're going to see all kinds of things happening uh, for you. Um, get in the flow. Get in the cycle. Spend time in nature. Nature will get you right on together. You don't even have to, like, do anything. You're feeling frustrated. You're feeling bogged down. I was feeling bogged down earlier today, and I went and sat out in the sun. I felt much better after that. So get outside. Get in nature. Get, in, get connected with your uh, moon. Get in sync with the moon cycle. How do you get in sync with the moon cycle? I've told you what the moon is, is encouraging. So do some of that. You know, focus on some of that. Set your intentions around that. If there's things that you need to get rid of and move out of your life right now that um, represent that kind of baked on, caked on feeling, uh, I don't care if it's a person, I don't care if it's a concept in your own head, I don't care if it's some way that you think about yourself, I don't care if it's your house, I don't care if it's, you know, whatever it is that's burdening you and bringing you down or that's dragging you down, um, ask yourself, why do I need this? What is this filling and fulfilling in my life? What emptiness is being fulfilled by this thing that I'm attached to or this person that I'm attached to that really isn't pushing me positively in the in the right direction so i'm here for you if you would like to get a personal full moon view reading i can do that for you if you want to take a look at your astrology i can take a look at that for you too in the meantime you can check back in here on this channel and i will be posting i don't know some things several things the art of the deck if you're into decks um, I am also going to be posting uh, your full moon view, your new moon view, and then also your astrological and oracle um, messages for the month for each of the zodiac. All right, so as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful life. Be well and take care.